Following on from the previous two videos, the second piece of knowledge that I need you to understand is this. Um, if you get a graph plotter and plot this, it will give you this red line here. It will give you the, this red line here. And this, by the way, is always trapped in between. Well, this line here will be y equals x, and this line here will be y equals negative x. But when you come to write the inequality here, this would be correct, and this here would not be correct. But uh, let's uh, let's try and understand why we need this um, this abs absolute sign here. So if you if you look at this here, you, you've got um, you've got one block multiplying another block. So this block here will look like this. So sine sine of x will look like this. But then when you have well sine one over x, it will look something like this. It will look um, it will look something like this, and then it smooths out like that. It will look something like this, and then it smooths out. Like this, but then dead on zero, dead on zero, it breaks down. Dead on zero, it breaks down. The the point here is that this this uh, this thing here is always trapped in between positive one, in between positive one and negative one. This thing here, this thing here, will always be trapped in between positive one and negative one. So so the largest value that this thing here could be is one. The lowest that this thing here could be is negative one. So you can say that this thing here is always less than is always less than this thing here. It's always less than less than this thing here. So it's always less than less than this you see this thing here makes sense when uh, when x is positive. But then when it's negative this thing here would be wrong. We have to use the absolute sign here. This would be correct. But this one here would not be correct. It would be correct. This thing here would be correct if x is always positive. But then when, when you enter the negative realm, so let's, let's look at this. You see this would be incorrect. This would be correct. Let's, let's look at what happens when x is in the negative realm. So, um, so let's say, let's say, uh, hang on, let me think. Let's say this point here. Let's say this point here is negative. Let's, let's guess it to be negative 1.8. So if you put negative 1.8, into here and into here this thing here would then jump this from here it would jump to here it would jump to here so let's say this this block here would be would be a uh, negative uh, 0 0.1 um, but then if, if you if you put this into here into uh, into here so this would be negative 1.1 uh, eight. So you've got a negative and a negative here. So that would be positive 1.8. But then you've got this less than, less than or equal to, to, well, to negative, this thing here, negative of, uh, uh, 0 0.1. Well, this, this can't be true. This is a positive number. The, the point here is that you, um, you need the absolute sign here. So when you, when you come to, uh, to trap this thing here, you've got to look at it like this. Um, well, your your absolute y equals absolute of x will look like this. Will look like this. So when when you um, when you f when you had stick a negative inside of that, it, it will flip it upside down. It will flip it upside down. So so this this bit here will look like this. Will look like this. So you're saying this thing here is always above. It's always above this absolute sign. The point is that you. You got to, You need the absolute here. Hang on. Let, let me try and illustrate it again. So your absolute y equals absolute of x looks like this. So when you stick a negative in front of it, it will it will turn upside down. So so this is your this is your lower low, the, the the lower part. The upper part will be this bit here. The absolute here. So your function here is always trapped in between the two. It's always trapped in between between the two. So you could have visualized it like this. It's always your function here. It's always above this thing here, which is true. It's always above. It's always above this thing here, and it's always below this thing here. You need the apps here. You you cannot you cannot have it like like this. It it, it just wouldn't make sense. So in your mind, think about the apps here. Um, apps um, is this thing here is always above the negative absolute here, and it's always this thing here is always below. This thing here, so you do need the apps. That's that's the second piece of thing that piece of knowledge that I need you to understand. The third one would be this. We've seen this um, 
in the past if you have a number that's less than one and then if, if you if you get it and times it by itself it's just going to get smaller and smaller and smaller so as as you power a number that's smaller than one it's just going to get smaller and smaller and smaller so if uh, if you have if you have a if you have a to be smaller than b let's say five over six you see five over six is less than one so when you when you when you keep on powering it it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller so remember if a is smaller than than b then for if a is smaller than b let's say seven over eight here then uh, then when you power it because this thing here is smaller it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller bear that in mind and we will use uh, we will use this to um, to, to find the limit of uh, of whatever we're trying to find out, okay?